Good day learners, this is Is Engineering. This time we're going to talk about fundamentals of solution stoichiometry. Imagine one instance in your life when you want to drink milk, but you have a powdered milk. What you will do is that you get a glass of hot water, pour the powdered milk, and stir it with spoon so that it will be dissolved in the water. Now, you have a solution of milk. Or suppose you want to drink pineapple juice, but you have a powdered pineapple juice. So you will get a glass of water, pour the powdered pineapple juice, and stir it with spoon so that it will be dissolved in the water. Then you transfer it into a pitcher and make a 1 liter pineapple juice. Now you have a solution of pineapple juice. What you did in the example is that you are making a solution. To recall, a solution is a liquid mixture in which a solute is uniformly distributed in a solvent. In a chemistry laboratory, you will see a bountiful of liquid solutions. Why? It is because liquid solutions are easier to store than gases and easier to mix than solids. A solution is measured by its concentration. It is the amount mole of dissolved substance or the solute per volume liter of the solution. This is the most common way to express concentration and otherwise known as molarity. Now let us try some problems. Glycine has the simplest structure of the 20 amino acids that make up proteins. What is the molarity of a solution that contains 0.715 mole of glycine in 495 milliliter? Recall that molarity is the number of moles of solute in each liter of solution. We divide the number of moles by the volume and convert the volume to liters to find the molarity. So the concentration is 1.44 molarity glycine. Now for another problem. Biochemists often study reactions in solutions containing phosphate ion, commonly found in cells. Now, how many grams of solute are in 1.75 liter of 0.460 molarity sodium hydrogen phosphate? So, we will multiply the known solution volume by the known molarity to find the amount mole of solute. So, now we have 1.75 and then convert it to mass gram by multiplying the molar mass of solute. Hence, there are 1.75 In diluting a solution where a concentrated solution or higher molarity is converted to a dilute solution or lower molarity by adding solvent, we just need to follow the formula C1, V1 equals to C2, V2. Where C1 and C2 are the initial and final concentration of the solution respectively, while V1 and V2 are the initial and final volume of the solution respectively. Here we can notice that in dilute solution, the amount moles of solute is the same with the concentrated solution, but their volumes are different. Also, we expect that the dilute solution contains fewer solute particles per unit volume and thus has a lower concentration than the concentrated solution. In example 2 where you make a pineapple juice is an example of diluting a solution. Initially, you have a glass of pineapple juice. Here your juice is a concentrated one and its taste is very sweet. Then you transfer it into a pitcher and make a 1 liter pineapple juice. Here your juice is being diluted and it tastes just exactly the sweetness that you want. Okay, let us try a problem. You have 20 milliliter of 5 molarity sodium hydroxide and you want to create a 1 molarity sodium hydroxide. What volume of water must be added? Now we just need to input the non-concentration and volume to the dilution formula and solve for the final volume. Using the dilution formula, we have C1V1 equals C2V2. Substitute the known values. We have 
so the final volume should be 100 ml. But since we have initial volume of 20 ml, we just need to add 80 ml of water to make a total of 100 ml. Hence, the volume that must be added to the 20 ml of 5 molarity sodium hydroxide is 80 ml of water to create a 1 molarity sodium hydroxide. So that's it. That is all for now. I hope you learned something today. Once again, this is Easy Engineering.